Okay, well, I thought I'd make a video kind of relating to my other Toyota pickup truck videos on the functioning of the um, emissions on the 22RE motor. So there's a lot of videos on the internet that kind of point at all the different parts on the motor and, you know, do a pretty good job of explaining things. When I was modifying my motor, I wanted to reroute some of the hoses and better understand how everything functioned. So I found the best way to do that was to actually just use this little diagram. And so I'm just going to make a video kind of and, and point out some of the stuff. And then you, you, if you have an interest in learning about it, you can kind of correlate it to the actual motor itself. Um, so... Just as a as as a starting point, here's the here's the cylinder head. You know the exhaust system and then the the intake system. So this represents the intake manifold area, and then this is the the throttle body. So they've left some things out, but overall they've kind of got everything. I added some colors when I was figuring this out for myself, so I could figure out where hoses went and and what exactly was going on. So you can kind of break it up into several large systems. Uh, over here in yellow, you see that you have kind of what's known as the, um, the air injection system. So if you look at, at this area here in the drawing, you can see that what you basically have is you have air coming in from the intake. It goes through a little reed system. And then there's a valve here, uh, known as the, the uh, air suction reed valve. And it is responsible for either injecting or not injecting air into the exhaust, which is exiting the motor. So if you want to find this part on your, your truck or your 22RE, uh, this is the little hose that runs from the air box along the hose, uh, the pipe that runs over the radiator, and then it disappears down into this little thing that a lot of people call uh, kind of a coconut, I guess you would say. And then uh, if, you, if you dig down a little bit deeper in there, you'll see that they're underneath, bolted to the bottom of the um, intake runners. You'll, you'll find the reed valve and the controlling mechanism here. Uh, if you ever take that off, you can kind of better understand it, but uh, for the sake of this video, you can just kind of look at how it works. So it's basically a little valve that controls whether air is injected, and the control mechanism is through the little rubber hoses that go to the VSV, and that stands for vacuum switching valve. Um, and then you'll see if you trace it out, and they do a pretty good job drawing everything, so if you're trying to figure out which hose goes where, you can actually look at how this is drawn and the outer hose over here is the one that goes to the check valve and then the check valve has to run to the um the intake manifold and usually this is the the one that says EFI on the top so it's not the it's not the runner down here it's the big thing uh, on top with with the throttle body so that's what they're representing here so uh when vacuum is applied here from from the induction uh and the um, the ECU of the car uh, opens the VSV. It allows vacuum to come through here, open this valve, and then air coming in along side of uh, the uh, air box with the air filter comes through here through this little reed valve assembly and then through this valve and it gets injected into the exhaust stream and that helps to reburn gases which are exiting the vehicle and heading towards the catalytic converter and you can see they've drawn it here uh, real accurately they have the upstream oxygen sensor and then they have the downstream oxygen sensor and then this is your catalytic converter okay so then what other systems do we have well we have uh, the EGR system which is kind of made up of two large components which uh, is the EGR cooler and if you look at the back of your cylinder head there's a there's kind of a cast iron plate that's bolted up back there and that is covering a water jacket at the back of the cylinder head and that keeps this plate uh, cool and then they um, 
and you, it's not really a pipe so much as it is kind of just a passageway. So if you pull your your header off or your exhaust manifold, you'll see there's a little uh, there's little passageways that allow exhaust gas to kind of reroute back through this uh, plate behind the cylinder head, and that makes its way over to the EGR valve. And and this long hose here is really just a an area where this valve bolts kind of to a passageway on the on the right rear of the cylinder head. And so anyone who's familiar with the 22R, you know, has seen this thing sticking up uh, on the on the back side of the cylinder head. And it has three uh things that happen here and the reason it's got so much stuff is that you have this EGR vacuum modulator and what this is attempting to do is kind of balance between the pressure of the exhaust gas and so they have a little pipe that bleeds off some of the pressure of the incoming exhaust which pushes on the bottom of this diaphragm and then depending on what is going up on with regard to vacuum here and here it it will modulate this kind of up and down and its primary goal is to allow some of this exhaust as i've marked in blue to be routed back into the intake part of the motor and this serves uh several purposes if you research it so a lot of people initially think oh well i'm going to get rid of this egr uh nonsense and get better gas mileage actually that's not what happens um Toyota has designed it in such a way that uh, this kind of bleeding off of the exhaust serves several beneficiary purposes or beneficial purposes. Uh, one of which is this exhaust gas, because it's inert, it actually has a cooling effect when it's sucked in along with the gasoline. And that it helps to cool down the cylinder, which is actually a good thing for emissions, uh, preventing detonation, and um, actually increasing your gas mileage. And a lot of people say, well, no, I don't care. You know, I'm, I need all the power I can get. Well, the good news is that the EGR uh, modulator doesn't, uh, and the VSV valve up here, doesn't allow for um, the EGR to operate at idle nor under heavy loads. So it's more of something that they use when the car is cruising at a steady pace uh, in an attempt to extend gas mileage and, and lower operating temperature. So I personally leave it on. I, I'm not interested in removing it, you know. Um, so if you're worried that it might, you know, be hurting your gas mileage, you, you can kind of put those fears to rest. Anyways, you can see the exhaust part here is is represented in blue. The red part is the vacuum uh, part that modulates it and kind of is responsible for getting vacuum over here to the e top of the EGR valve, which pulls this little pin up and starts to allow exhaust gases to enter back into the intake valve, uh, intake uh, manifold. And so then to kind of better understand this affair, I've marked the ER um, designations that you can see on the top of your intake manifold and kind of where they go. And again, the drawing is very, very accurate. So you, you can actually look at it and, and look at the little parts and figure out very easily kind of which, uh, you know, um, vacuum hose goes where. And by the way, these are four millimeter uh, in, inside diameter vacuum hoses. So if you're looking for uh, replacing these, be sure you get the right uh, millimeters because uh, it has an impact on how well the hoses fit, especially over here. So four millimeters is what you're shooting for. Um, and then you can see that uh, the little port on the front of the throttle body goes up here, routes through the, the VSV, again, vacuum switching valve. And this is just a, an on-off vacuum valve, which is controlled electronically by the ECU. So the, the car's electronic control unit or its computer uh, is responsible for when it decides that it wants to bring these systems into play. So you can see what it does is it routes vacuum here and then over here. And um, depending on 
kind of how uh, much pressure there is from the exhaust. It can either kind of close things off or, or allow them to function in so far as uh, bringing enough vacuum into play to pull this up. So that's, that's what's going on over here. Um, and then that leaves, I guess, the charcoal canister mystery. Um, so the charcoal canister has two uh, ports. One is, uh, if you look carefully, it'll say it goes to the tank. And then the other one is the purge port. So what the heck is going on over here? Well, uh, starting, I don't remember exactly what year, they decided that they needed for, to keep the atmosphere clean uh, and reduce emissions from vehicles. They need to seal up the fuel tank instead of venting the gas fumes off into the atmosphere. They thought, well, we need to burn them in the motor. But because the motor isn't always in a position where it wants to accept uh, additional gas fumes, they kind of needed a reservoir to hold those fumes, and that's what the charcoal canister is. So the charcoal canister is just what you think it is. It's a big canister full of charcoal. Um, if you take a hacksaw and cut here, you just dump out a bunch of charcoal. Kind of looks like the stuff you have in your fish tank filter. Um, and so what happens is the fumes from the gas tank come into the charcoal canister and they kind of uh, aggregate in the charcoal. And then this line here, which is the purge line, and it goes down to a little area marked P, it is responsible for just drawing off uh, those fumes uh, to try to keep the fumes out of the canister as much as possible. So over time, the charcoal gets saturated. You can look up videos how to you know revitalize or re, uh, clean your charcoal canister and um, I've done it. It's a little bit of a messy job and it's somewhat dangerous, but the basic idea is you take the charcoal canister and open it up, cut it open with a hacksaw, dump all the charcoal out, and then you light it on fire with a blowtorch. Uh, you got to be real careful when you do that. I wouldn't recommend it, uh, doing all the charcoal at once. I, when I did mine, I did it in, in very small sections, so like a tenth of the charcoal I, I would light on fire, stir it around outside, and you got to be super duper careful. Uh, once the charcoal will not light anymore, you've, you successfully burned out you know, the, the gas fumes that have accumulated into the charcoal over the years. And then, like I say, I just did a tenth of, a, of the whole canister at a time, and it took about you know, an hour. And then I and then I put it all back together, and you know my charcoal canister is, is kind of revitalized or you know uh, purged there, I guess, or uh, I guess you would say reactivated. So that's what's going on with that. It's just a simple hose that that runs over here, and then um, that pretty much uh, represents the entire smog system on the vehicle. So what they're doing is they're um, they're injecting a little bit of air here under certain circumstances, depending on what the computer deems necessary to help burn the um, exhaust gases. So from a performance standpoint of view, uh, the whole air injection system, air suction system, ha has really no impact whatsoever on whether or not you're, you're making horsepower or getting better gas mileage. It's completely... An, an effort to introduce a little bit of oxygen to re-burn this emission when it hits your red hot catalytic converter. So, the, other than just maybe cleaning up the, you know, the the area under the intake runners, uh, there's not a real big pressing reason to delete this system. And then, uh, of course, for the charcoal canister, it's a fairly simple. Uh, hoses that just go and it's just purging the fumes so there's no pressing need to remove that um, the EGR uh, is the one that usually gives people kind of some pause you know because like hey what the heck's going on here why are you injecting my exhaust back into my you know beautiful fuel injection and again at idle and under heavy loads such as full throttle, uh, that system is completely turned off. So it's it's not interfering with you know, uh, you know your peak horsepower or or accelerating on an on ramp or anything like that. So you you kind of don't have to worry too much about that. Also, because it modulates, it's not always running at full full bore. Sometimes this is just 
bleeding and a little bit of extra uh, exhaust gas. So it's, again, when you're cruising uh, on the highway at a consistent speed, that is when they begin to open it and, and, and allow some of that gas to be drawn in. And as I mentioned previously, it actually has a, a beneficial cooling effect to reduce the cylinder temperature. And as you may know, a lower cylinder temperature uh, helps control the flame front uh, during detonation in the cylinder. So it's actually uh, quite beneficial to reducing knocking and, and those kinds of things, such as going up a hill and in fifth gear and just overall allowing the car to run cooler and it does uh from what i understand i've never tested it myself but from what i've read it does uh improve your gas mileage so uh, like i say i originally was going to remove mine and, and then i opted to just leave it totally factory so if everything's working right you got a, a new catalytic converter all this stuff is clean uh the modulation valve is working correctly the VSV valves are, are clicking open when the computer wants them to. And most importantly, this EGR valve is not stuck. And you and you and it, it pays to take it off and clean it with carburetor cleaner uh, every so often. As long as everything's functioning, then Toyota's done a pretty great job of, of uh, you know, putting this system together. So, um, like I say, I just, I leave, I leave mine well enough alone and, and uh, run it on the motor, so... Okay, well, I hope this video has kind of helped give you an overview. And, you know, now you can go look under your hood and trace some of these hoses and what have you and figure out, you know, when you run into this and, you know, versus that over there versus the purge line. So if you, you kind of have a little bit of a, an overview of what's going on and, and what Toyota is trying to accomplish with the motor there and the different uh, three main systems, I guess you would say, the the the, the the EVAP system, the air injection system, and then recirculating a little bit of gas. So, okay, well, I hope this video has helped you out. And uh, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to use the comment section below. Thanks for watching.